after investigate, uh, investigating, we have to assign a cause why the bleeding is happening. So previously there was a, the term DUB, menorrhagia and metrorrhagia was extensively used. But in uh, to 2011, Pigo has come up with a classification system called as palm point. I mean, in uh, subsequent slides, we will be going through in detail what it is exactly. So, every patient who is having a aberration of uh, menstrual bleeding, whatever it may, will be termed as abnormal uterine bleeding, which is deviating from the normal. In 2011, they have devised, created this classification system. And in 2012, it was even endorsed by uh, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So, if you are seeing, they, it has two parts, the PALM part, the palm part, which uh, deals with the structural problems like endometrial or cervical polyp, adenomyosis, leomyoma, which is fibroid, or M is malignancy and hyperplasia. The non-structural causes are in the second half of the name, which is cone. C stands for coagulopathy. O for ovulatory dysfunction, E for endometrial causes, I for iatrogenic, and N not yet classified. Not yet classified, which was the previously used term, uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding when the cause was not assigned, it was just generically given a term of DUB, is now we have to refer as AUBN. So one by one we are going through this endometrial polyp. It is just an outgrowth of the endometrium. As you can see here, this is the hysteroscopic picture. When we introduce the hysteroscope inside the uterine cavity, it is just an out, out, out uh, pouching of the endometrial cavity. What it does is, it increases the surface area of endometrium and increases the bleeding. It is also hormonal, hormonally active. So, if the female is having a high estrogen level, there is increased risk of developing these endometrial polyps. As you can see in this another picture, which is an ultrasound picture, there is a thickened endometrium with a feeding vessel seen. It is often missed in a two-dimensional ultrasonography picture. So, whenever there is a suspicion, there is radiologist should always do a Doppler or uh, try to demarcate the vascularity to differentiate from a generalized thickness of endometrium and an endometrium polyp. The another modality which the radiologist can use is a saline infusion sonography. When the fluid is injected inside the uterine cavity, it creates a uh, cavity, it, it uh, dilates the cavity and it helps to demarcate the polyp because in if you closely see in this ultrasound image uh, there is minimal amount of fluid which can be the endometrial secretions or um, infective secretions which will help to delineate the outline of a polyp so the management of this is generally removal of these polyps with hormonal uh, treat, uh, treatment or hysteroscopic guided uh, polypectins. The second is A. A stands for adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a benign condition uh, of uterus in which endometrial glands and stoma is found embedded deep in the myometry. There can, it can be uh, because of basal endometrial hyperplasia which invades the hyperplastic myometrial stoma. There, why it happens? There are only theories. It could be hereditary, it could be because of trauma caused during childbirth or any dilatation and curatage or evacuation, it, because of hyperestrogen in the body or uh, some viral transmission theories have also been provided. But uh, with uh, surety, we cannot pinpoint a one particular theory that why adenomyosis happens. So primarily it occurs in Paris female over the age of 40. Symptoms include menorrhagia, often dis associated with dysmenorrhea. The uh, uterus is diffusely enlarged. Rarely it uh, exceeds 12 weeks size. So as you see in this image, there is gross uh, hyperplasia of the myometrium. 
and the endomyometrial junction is not very clearly seen. So those are the minor subtle points which helps the radiologist to differentiate between the adenomyotic and uh, myometrial hyperplasia. Now the most common uh, findings which are seen in the ultrasound picture is uterine fibroids which is also called as leomyoma. It is a benign tumor originating in the smooth muscle layer of the uterus. Most of it, around 20 to 40 percent of the time, it do not cause any symptom. It is often an incidental finding for any other reason. If we see the geographical distribution, it is more common in African population than in the Caucasian population. It is. Uh, it previously it was uh, thought to be dependent on estrogen for its growth, but now uh, recent studies have told that estrogen prime does the priming but it's mainly the progesterone which causes the growth of pheomyomas and often the men after menopause the size of fibers reduces broadly it was classified into three types which is intramural subserosal and submucosal intramural is the fibroid which is located within the wall of the uterus Subserosal within the mucosal or the peritoneal surface of the uterus and submucosal beneath the endometrium. It often distort, distorts the uterine cavity and is mostly the cause of menorrhage. So, in practice, we see that subserosal fibroids do not cause menorrhage. It often causes pressure symptoms or pain. And most of the times, it is asymptomatic. Submucosal is the most notorious one, which increases the, the, the surface area of endometrium and hence causes menorrhage. Intramural fibroid, again, it depends on the exact location of the fibroid. If it is more towards the uh, endometrium, it again, like, the only, it is only the distortion of the endometrial cavity and Sometimes they have endogenous prostaglandin secretions or production in the fibroid, which leads to menorrhage. This is the pigo classification of endo of uh, uh, fibroids. As you see, it has been numbered from zero to eight. This has been done for the uniform uh, reporting of the cases. So, if you see, zero is a pedunculated submucosal fibroid. 1 is sub 0, 1 and 2 are submucosal in 1 and 2. When there is four, more than 50% inside the cavity and uh, 2 is when less, uh, less than 50% is in the cavity. Charting and fibroid mapping is very important in uh, defining the myoma because it helps us to determine the modality which will be used for treatment of as uh, you can see if it is deeply embedded in the myometrium like submucosal type 2 it, it will be very difficult to do uh, do a myomectomy hysteroscopically so it is uh, very important to map the fibroids whenever we are planning and also in the a palm point passage we are uh, writing the diagnosis we have to mention as a u b l s m if uh, we get such a report so you can see in the picture the uh, myoma how it looks it looks as outpouching only uh, but less fluffy and more firm in appearance that is how we differentiate a fibroid from an endometrial polyp so, why fibroid cause menorrhagia is because it distorts an enlarged uterine cavity. There is increased surface area of uh, from which the menstruation occurs and it produces endogenous prostaglandin which acts locally and it prevents vasoconstriction during the menstruation and hence leading to menorrhagia. Now, M is malignancy or hyperplasia. It is a broad term used for any kind of malignancy leading to menorrhagia. It could be a cervical, either cancer or CIN, endometrial hyperplasia, uterine cancer, and even uh, in uh, ovarian uh, CA, that is uh, granulosa cell tumor, which is estrogen secreting uh, tumors, 
which will present as uh, menorrhea. Now go, coming to the non-structural causes, coagulatory dysfunction, it uh, amounts to around 3% of the women who presents with heavy menstrual bleeding. The causes often are von Willebrand's disease, platelet dysfunction, factor 11 deficiency and factor 10 deficiency. Uh, many patients who are on long-term anticoagulants are also uh, who presents with menorrhagia are also included in uh, this category. Ovarian uh, ovulation dysfunction. Uh, actually, it, ovulation dysfunction is the most common AUV which we see in clinical practice because uh, uh, PCOS has been rampant. It has become like an epidemic now. So all all the endocrinopathies uh, is uh, included under the ovulation dysfunction. It includes PCOS, thyroid disorder, hyperprotinemia, obesity, and any chronic dysfunction leading or any chronic diseases which in turn hampers ovulation from happening, this regulates the menstrual cycle. Endometrial dysfunction as in atrophic endometritis or infective endometritis is considered as a UBE. Hydrogenic, where exogenous hormones are used or patient is on SSRIs. Intrauterine device, often copper containing uterine uh, contraceptive device uh, causes <coughs> menorrhagia and is one of the most common causes of discontinuation of IUCD device. Not otherwise spec uh, specified includes Mullerian anomalies like Didelphus, septate or biconeal uterus. The concept remains the same because in uh, Didelphus, septate or biconeal uterus if it is functional, the surface area, the menstruating surface area increases and hence leading to increased uh, bleeding. Uh, if there is any AV malformation or cesarean scar defect, it comes under not otherwise specified. Now, coming to treatment. First of all, the menorrhagia or excessive menstrual bleeding will lead to anemia. And anemia will lead to an array of symptoms which will hamper the day-to-day -day activity of the lady. So, first and foremost, we have to correct the iron deficiency. And secondly, we have to uh, treat the systemic disorder wherever relevant. Like for example, if a, if a patient is hypothyroid and because of hypothyroidism, patient uh, is having menorrhage. So, how much ever hormonal pills we will give, it will just temporarily stop her symptom, but it is not going to actually treat the cause. If her uh, uh, endo, uh, thyroid levels come to normal, the, she will not, uh, like the uh, hormonal pills can be discontinued. No, and there are few medical treatments available and surgical treatments which we will deal with in details. Now, medical treatments, uh, there are non-hormonal and hormonal. Non-hormonal medical treatments include NSAIDs and antifibrinolytics. Hormonal uh, treatment includes progesterones, which uh, pro only progesterones, which could be oral like norethisterone or in the form of levonorgestrel intrauterine system, uh, that is Mirena, combined oral contraceptive pills, and gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. Surgical treatment includes endometrial ablation, myomectomy, uterine artery embolization, and hysterectomy. So, coming to non hormonal uh, medical management part, NSAID uh, so which restores the imbalanced endometrial prostaglandin synthesis. It reduces blood loss by 20 to 49%. Uh, the most commonly used is methanomic acid. Uh, the common side effect of using an uh, NSAID is, is indigestion, diarrhea, and many a times if the patient is uh, having asthma or peptic ulcer disease, it often uh, worsens the condition. So it's here comes the benefit of taking a detailed history regarding asthma and peptic ulcer disease because if someone is having uh, asthma or peptic ulcer disease, we have to tell them to be cautious regarding the use of NSAID. Antifibrinolytics, it inhibits the fibrinolysis in endometrium and it reduces blood loss by 29 to 58%. So, tranexamic acid is the most commonly drug <coughs> which is used. It is taken from the onset of menses up to 5 days or even less if the bleeding is controlled. And the side effects include indigestion, diarrhea and headaches. A systemic progesterone, it helps to keep the endometrium thin. Norethisterone, 15 mg daily, is used from day 5 to day 26 of the menstrual cycle. Common side effects include weight gain, acne, 
bloating, breast tenderness and headaches and rare side effects include depression and mood swings. Injectable progesterone such as Depo-Provera can be used in special condition when the patient is having very prolonged bleeding. Common side effects include weight gain, irregular bleeding, amenorrhea, PMS-like symptoms which include floating, fluid retention, breast tenderness. Less common is loss of bone mineral density. However, the bone mineral density recovers after the treatment is stopped. So often we uh, need to supplement with calcium when using long-term progesterone. If the patient is taking continually for three months, six months uh, progesterone, we need to supplement them with uh, some calcium. Uh, Mirena is a very good drug because it is not dependent on patient. You need not take or remember taking medicine daily. The property when the it's a T-shaped device which is inserted in the uterus. The levonorgestrel is secreted at the rate of 20 microgram every 24 hours. It causes endometrial atrophy in effective for 5 years. It also acts as a contraceptive method. And fertility returns almost immediately after its removal. 30% of the patient using Mirena becomes amenorrheic by 1 year. And the mean reduction of blood loss is 95%. It's a very uh, good uh, method if the patient is not bothered about becoming a menor. It is a general notion that patient will have a sense of security when they are getting treated monthly. Uh, so, but it is a very good device if patient, if the, if the person is uh, about uh, pre perimenopausal age and in few years anyways going to attain menopause it's a very good device the side effects include irregular breathing breast tenderness acne headache uterine perforation at the time of insertion combined oral contraceptive pill pills inhibits ovulation and uh, regular uh, shedding of thin endometrium happens as the endometrium is thin the bleeding is not so heavy. Mean reduction of blood loss is 50% and the common side effects include mood changes, headaches, nausea, breast tenderness, fluid retention. Rare side effect is uh, DVT, uh, cerebrovascular actins and myocardial infarction. Though rare, we should take a detailed history of the patient. If in, in the family history there is in uh, cases of uh, cavernous venous thrombosis or uh, venous thromboembolytic event, in during pregnancy uh, so these might be <clears throat> seen in very rare situation gnr tetanus suppresses pituitary ovarian axis it is temporary reversible menopausal state preoperative it can it is also used as a preoperative adjunct in large fibroids uh, or if uh, large fibroids and menorrhagia have caused severe anemia gnr agonist gives us time to build up hemoglobin of the patient before we plan for a surgery and often, uh, if other options are Pfizer, such as if it's a high risk for surgery or uh, uh, uriprostal or mesoprostal is not indicated, like in liver failure, we can use GnRH agonist. If uh, GnRH agonist are used for more than six months, add back HRT therapy is uh, to be added. Common side effects include hot flashes, increased sweating, vaginal dryness. Less commonly, osteoporosis is always.